uh, welcome again to our study of prophets from the prophets. And we're looking today at the prophet Zechariah. If that name rings a bell with you, it's because Zechariah was the name of the priest who was the father of John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, were cousins. And so Jesus and John the Baptist are related in that way. Zechariah, the prophet, one of the minor prophets, there are 12 of those in the Old Testament, is a prophet whose name means the Lord will reign over all. It's often easy for us to forget that God is in charge. God reigns over all things. We tend to think it's our responsibility. So when we have a problem, we run and we do all the kinds of things that we know how to do. And then when we have nothing else to do, we decide we better pray about it. Well, prayer should be the first step that we take, not the last step that we take. And in that context, Zechariah reminds us to seek the Lord. After 70 years of captivity, the people returned to Jerusalem and enthusiastically began to rebuild the temple. But after some years of working on the temple, they got distracted by building their own houses and planting their own crops and forgot that God was with them and that he should have been their first priority. Along with Zechariah, who was a little younger, was another prophet who was a little older. His name was Haggai whose name means festival, and he's mentioned in the book of Ezra, uh, along with Zechariah, and he was prophesying and recognizing that all the, although the people worked hard, they were sometimes distracted by trying to fulfill their own needs for houses and lands rather than building God's temple. So this book uh, is a book that reminds us of much of Jesus' preaching. Do you know that Jesus quoted the Psalms more than any other book in the Old Testament? He quoted the book of Deuteronomy next, and then he quoted several of the minor prophets, particularly when it came to the matter of justice, of doing the right thing, of taking care of the poor, uh, of seeking God's kingdom first, and then the other things will be added to you. Uh, in these prophets, you have Jesus being described as the servant or the branch of Jehovah and as both priest and king. So in Hebrews, you have that fulfillment of that title of Jesus, the great high priest and the king of the universe. Zechariah's prophecy is uh, divided into uh, a number of chapters, 12 of them exactly. It's the longest, in fact, of the so-called minor prophets. There, it begins with a call for the people to return to faith in God. How many times have you seen yourself or looked at yourself and seen that you kind of slid back, you've drifted a little bit. Some would say we compromise our faith. What often happens is we grow less sensitive to the spiritual things of our lives. Zechariah was concerned about that happening to Israel. And so he said, don't slide back. Don't fall back. Sometimes uh, we call that backsliding in the church. And occasionally you may hear a sermon by a pastor that said it's time for you to 
stop backsliding and to start repenting and to come to a place of new growth in your life. Well, that's kind of the message that Zechariah gave to the people. Return to the Lord and let him bless you. And then Zechariah picks up in verse 7 of his prophecy and goes through uh, chapter 8. That's seven chapters that he gives you these visions of how people have fallen away from the Lord. Eight visions are, occur in chapter 1, verse 7, through chapter 6, verse 8. And then an, a, another significant event occurs in the book of Zechariah. There is the need for a high priest to be chosen and crowned. And Zechariah becomes the prophet through which this uh, event in the life of Israel is uh, concluded. So Joshua, not the Joshua that served under Moses, but the Joshua, a common name, as is the name Jesus uh, in the New Testament. Joshua was a common name in the Old Testament. This Joshua becomes the high priest of the nation. And finally, uh, Zechariah shares four messages from God, which I'm not going to go into each one of them now, but you'll find them in chapter 7 and chapter 8 of Zechariah's writing. And then he talks about the oracles against the nations, judgment that is coming to Israel's neighbors. One of the things that most of the minor prophets do is that they tend to talk about God's judgment on the enemies of Israel who surround them, and then they zero in on God's judgment to his own people, the nation of Israel. Maybe it's easier for us also to hear the message that our enemies are bad, that the people who take different opinions from us are not to be trusted, but then the message always comes back to us, at least God's message comes back to us, and it says, as the prophet pointed the bony finger into David's face, thou art the man. God always wants you not to stand up and cheer when the enemies are told that they're sinful. He wants you and me to confess our sins and to kneel at his feet and worship him and repent of our own sins. The writer Muriel, Muriel Anderson uh, tells a story about her family and the philosophy that she learned uh, growing up. And one of the things her mother said over and over uh, again to her was these four words, of course you can. Can you imagine the kind of encouragement that must have been to that little girl when she faced the difficulty and said, as so often our children do to us, I can't do that. Mom would say, of course you can. And so often we turn to God and we say, wait a minute, God, I can't do that. The Bible's full of people like that. Moses said, I can't speak. Don't send me to Pharaoh. Gideon said, I'm the least of the family members of my tribe, which is the smallest in Israel. We always have excuses that we turn to God and give to him as to why we can't do what he's called us to do. But like the prophet, God reminds us that he will supply and that he thunders in our ears, of course you can. I'll give you the resource. I'll make it possible for you to accomplish that which I've called you to do. And so this message comes through in the book of Zechariah, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And God is described here 
in the book as the conqueror, the one who can do all things and who never fails. So the key verse of the book of Zechariah is the word that the prophet brought to Zerubbabel, the governor, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And the prophet asked the question, who are you, O great mountain? And he prophesies, before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the captives with a shout of grace, grace to all. Jesus said, if you have faith, you can declare the mustard seed a defeat for the mountains in your life. Are you trusting in that power? It's not the power of the earthquake or the power of the whirlwind or the power of great events happening around you as Elijah experienced, but it's the power of the still small voice speaking in your heart and in your life. So don't be discouraged when things seem small or slow. God uses little events and unknown people in powerful ways to accomplish his work. If you and I took Zachariah's message seriously, then we would be reminded that little is much if God is in it. Remember those two phrases, the one that Muriel's mom said, of course you can. And the second one, little is much when God is in it. May those things inspire you today and inspire me to follow the instructions of the prophet and to accomplish all that God has called us to do. Be successful because of his blessing.